So now let us go to the second part of rotation theorem, which is rotation about a complex number z1. So now assume that you have two complex numbers z1 and z2. So assume that these two are the given complex numbers. So now what you need, you're asked to do is you're asked to rotate z2 about the point z1 through an angle of theta. So you're not doing the rotation about origin now. You're doing the rotation of z2 about z1 through an angle of theta. So once you rotate this, assume that you have reached a point z3. So what is z3? That's the question. So to understand this, so let us consider the complex number z3 minus z1, z3 minus z1 by z2 minus z1. So let us consider this complex number. So what can you say about the magnitude of this? What can you say about the argument of this? So these are the two things that I'm going to analyze. So first, what is mod z3 minus z1 by z2 minus z1? So by the properties of mod, this is nothing but mod of z3 minus z1 divided by mod of z2 minus z1. So what is mod of z3 minus z1? This is nothing but the distance between the points z1 and z3. It is this distance. And what is z2 minus z1? This is the distance between the point z2 and z1. Now if I assume this radius as r, this distance as r, because I'm just rotating, so this distance will also be equal to r. Hence, r by r is equal to 1. So mod of z3 minus z1 by z2 minus z1 is equal to 1. Next, what is the argument of z3 minus z1 by z2 minus z1? So from the properties of argument, there is nothing but argument of z3 minus z1, argument of the numerator minus argument of z2 minus z1. Now, what is argument of z3 minus z1? This is the angle made by the ray joining z1 to z3 with the direction of real axis, positive real axis. So join z1 to z3, so you get this vector. So what is the angle that this vector makes with the positive direction of x-axis? So this will be the angle, right? So I'm drawing the positive direction of x-axis here. So this will be the angle that I'm talking about. So let this be theta 2. So this is equal to theta 2 minus. What is the argument of z2 minus z1? This is the angle made by the ray joining z1 to z2 with the positive direction of x-axis. So join z1 to z2, that will be the ray. So what is the angle made by this with the x-axis theta 1? So let it be theta 1. So what is theta 2 minus theta 1? It is nothing but theta which is the angle of rotation. So now modulus of this complex number is 1. Argument of this complex number is theta. So can I write z3 minus z1 by z2 minus z1 is equal to e power i theta. So this implies z3 minus z1 is equal to z2 minus z1 times e power i theta. And this implies z3 is equal to z1 plus z2 minus z1 times e power i theta. So this is how you find the value of z3. So I hope the process is clear. So usually we won't remember this. We remember this step. So the final vector. So if you have an initial vector z1, z2 bar and the final vector is z1, z3 bar, the final vector z3 minus z1 by initial vector z2 minus z1 is equal to because I don't change the magnitude, 
there is no real number here i just change the amplitude so you get e power i theta going from the initial vector to the final vector if the angle is counterclockwise from initial to the final then you have a positive theta here if the angle is in the clockwise direction you have a minus theta here so apart from this if you are rotating as well as increasing the magnitude by k times so this part does not change here you will get a k so here you will get a k here you will get a k here you will get a k that's the only difference so if you are also changing the magnitude by root 2 times or k times so apart from e power i theta you also get k here that is the number of times the magnitude is increased so let us take an example for this question also so for example let us take this question so you have two points 1 2 and 3 3 and these represent the opposite sides of a square this ac is the diagonal of a square so can you find the other two vertices of this square so let us see how we can do this by rotation theorem so now to find the other two sides of the square so if you complete the square so if you complete the square so let the other points be b and d so to get to the point b what you need to do is you need to rotate this ac by an angle of 45 degrees right in the counterclockwise direction and you need to decrease the magnitude by root 2 times because if this is a the side will be a by root 2 and to get the point d you need to rot rotate ac through pi by 4 in the clockwise direction and also reduce the magnitude by root 2 units so now to do this from rotation theorem let us apply our formula so let point b be z so let us consider that this is my required complex number so what you need to write is the final vector by initial vector is equal to the number of times the final vector's magnitude is with respect to the initial vector into e power i times the angle of rotation from initial to final vector. So what is the final vector? z minus of a is 1 plus 2i divided by what is the initial vector? Vector point c minus point a that is the complex number correspond to c minus the complex number correspond to a this is 3 plus 3i this is 1 plus 2i so 3 plus 3i minus of 1 plus 2i is equal to magnitude of final vector by magnitude of initial vector magnitude of final vector by magnitude of initial vector is 1 by root 2 times e power the angle going from initial to final vector so initial to final i have pi by 4 in counter clockwise direction so you have e power i pi by 4 so this implies z minus of 1 plus 2i divided by 3 minus 1 is 2 3i minus 2i is i is equal to 1 by root 2 times e power i pi by 4 is 1 plus i by root 2 1 plus i by root 2 so root 2 and root 2 get multiplied to give you 2 so this implies z minus of 1 plus 2 i is equal to 2 plus i times 1 plus i by 2 that is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1 2i plus i is 3i by 2. So z is equal to 1 plus 3i by 2 
plus 1 plus 2i that is equal to 1 plus 2 is 3, 3i plus 4i is 7i by 2. So this is my complex number corresponding to B. So the point will be 3 by 2 comma 7 by 2. So I hope this is clear. Next, if you want point D, the difference is just that you need to rotate it through an angle of pi by 4 in the clockwise direction. So if this complex number is Z dash, the equations will be exactly same as this. So Z dash minus of 1 plus 2i, that is the final vector Z dash minus of 1 plus 2i by initial vector is again 3 plus 3i minus of 1 plus 2i is equal to final vector by initial vector magnitude into e power minus i pi by 4. That is equal to 1 minus i by root 2. So this becomes 1 minus i by 2. This is 1 minus i by 2. So you just need to multiply this. So z dash minus of 1 plus 2i is equal to so this becomes 2 plus i times 1 minus i by 2 that is equal to 2 plus 1 is 3 minus 2i plus i is minus i by 2. So you can send this on to this side and try to get z dash. So z dash is equal to 3 minus i by 2 plus 1 plus 2i which is equal to 3 plus 2 5 i 4i minus i is plus 3i by 2. So this will be 5 by 2 comma 3 by 2. So you got the point z as well as z dash using rotation about the point 1 2. So now that you have understood both parts of the rotation theorem, so we can go for a generalized rotation theorem which has four points. So let us say that we have four points z1, z2, z3, z4 and there is an angle theta between these two segments. Now how is z1, z2, z3, z4 related? So what rotation theorem says is final vector by initial vector is equal to mod of final vector by mod of initial vector times e power i times the angular change angular change from initial to final vector. So this is the format in which you can use a general rotation theorem. Now if you want to connect z1, z2, z3 and z4. So what you do is as you can see if you take the vector z1, z3 and the vector z3, z4, you take the vector z1, z3 and the vector z3, z4, what is the angle between the initial vector and the final vector? So you're going through an angle theta in the counterclockwise direction. Now what the relation that you can write is the initial vector is z1, z3 that is z3 minus z1 and the final vector is z2 z4 that is z4 minus z2 is equal to z3 minus z1 by z4 minus z2 is equal to mod of z3 minus sorry, mod of z4 minus z2 by mod of z3 minus z1 into e power i times the angular change from initial vector to final vector. So initial vector is in this direction, the final vector is in this direction. So you have rotated through an angle theta in the counterclockwise direction. So you have e power i theta. So this will be the relation between z1, z2, z3 and z4. So once you can write this relation, that means you are well versed in the concept of rotation theorem. Thank you.